This video shows how to measure the lower extremity using the mark and measure method. The video will cover three areas, basic measuring procedure, measuring requirements for style variations, and a few common options and features. Section one is basic measuring procedure. Record each measurement on the BioConcept's lower extremity measurement chart. Refer to the measuring manual for an explanation of the shorthand notation system for measurements recorded in inches. Measurements in centimeters are welcome. Simply record in decimal notation. Know the measurements you need before you start measuring. Use the BioConcept's retractable tape for circumference measurements. And remember, never pull the tapes snugly. We will be reviewing the leg measurement procedure with measurements of the whole leg from just above the ankle to the fold of the buttocks. The capital D measurement around the heel will be needed if your lower extremity garment will include a foot. It is described in the foot measurement video. Mark the anterior ankle crease, point Y on the foot measurement chart in ink. With the zero point located at point Y, Make a mark of the front of the leg every one and a half inches up to the knee. Never take a circumference of the leg at the ankle. Take circumference measurements at each marked point and record those circumference measurements on the lower extremity chart. Make a pen mark on the side of the leg right below the knee. Then measure up the rest of the leg. The top two circumferences may not be one and a half inches apart. If so, measure the actual distance between the two and record the distance on the chart. When measuring for the lower torso, legs, and feet, make a zero mark of the measuring tape at point X, which is the fold of the buttocks. With the patient standing erect, use the measuring tape to measure the distance from the fold of the buttocks to the floor. Hold the tape as vertical as possible and always take this measurement from the back of the patient. Refer to the manual for important information about the fold to floor measurement. The leg circumferences and the one and a half inch increments will tell you how long the patient's leg is. Compare this with the fold to the floor measurement. If the leg is shorter than the fold to the floor by an amount that would roughly correspond to the height of the foot, then it should be correct. But if the leg length is the same or even larger than the fold to the floor, then you've probably taken too many circumferences at the top of the leg. Section two of the video covers measuring requirements for style variations. For garments that include the lower extremity and lower torso, but not the foot, begin measurements at point X, the fold of the buttocks. Make a mark on the leg every one and a half inches down as far as you want the garment to extend. For garments that cover the legs only, including number 14 stocking to knee, number 15 stocking to thigh, and number 16 stocking knee to thigh, make a mark on the leg where you want to begin. Hold the measuring tape against the leg and make additional marks every one and a half inches to the desired end of the garment. We move now to section three, a few common options and features of the garments. Here are a few of our most commonly ordered garment styles and features. Keep in mind, we have many, many more options and features of every style of garment. Consult the measuring manual for more information. This is an example of a number 12 stocking to knee. Cylon Tech's medical grade silicone lines the dorsum of the foot. This example has an open toe, a full opening zipper that comes all the way to the top of the stocking and a contracture seam at the anterior ankle crease to keep the fabric from bunching. For these or any desired options on any garment, specify the options on the measurement chart. These are examples of a number 13 and a number 15, both stocking to thigh. The left, the number 15, is without the foot and has a band at the top. The stocking on the right, number 13, has a foot and a silicone band at the top, anterior ankle insert, and a soft toe. The left stocking has an expansion panel, which allows for child growth or adult weight gain and gets a little more life out of the garment. This example of a number 16 is a knee to thigh stocking with a standard one inch band at the top. It is fully lined with regular lining material throughout the entire garment. Here's an example of a number 18, leg and panty, a knee lining on the left, 
an expansion panel on both sides, and a band at the leg. This stocking has a self-enclosed toe. This example, number 19, two legs to waist, stops just above the ankle. It has an open crotch and posterior knee inserts, which helps prevent irritation caused by fabric bunching in the posterior knee crease. The open crotch helps with bathroom needs if the patient can't get the pants down on their own. Number 21 is a brief with a snap crotch. The garment is also available with a non-opening crotch. This is a number 23 brief, two legs above the knees, with a standard one-inch elastic waistband and one-inch elastic bands at the ends of the legs. This example for a male has a horizontal fly. Number 26 is a sleeveless bodysuit. The garment shown here has a brief and a leg below the knee on the left. It has an open crotch and an offset zipper to the right and a lining with silicone. Here's a number 27 bodysuit sleeve to above knee. It has an expansion panels on the left sleeve and torso on the left side and has a gusset. There is a zipper on the left leg and a zipper on the anterior torso. Number 28 